welcome everyone to the 18th Deacon Seminar. Uh, today we have the pleasure to welcome Dr. Bruno karbalas uh, Bruno is a researcher at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, working on the topics of digital economy. Uh, he has finished his PhD at the Université de Sorbonne Paris Nord and has spent time doing research uh, also at Universitat Oberta de Catalunya and Ideas for Change. Uh, more recently, he's been the collaborat collaborative economy and data economics expert at the Kronos Media Mundi company. Uh, and among other topics, Bruno has published extensively on the topics of data economics, competition and platforms. And today he will present his work titled when the market loses its relevance, an empirical analysis of demand side linkages in platform ecosystems. So uh, we have approximately 40 minutes for the presentation, followed by time for questions. And so Bruno, thank you very much for being here and the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Vojtek, and thank you for the invitation to this uh, seminar. And uh, thank you all for, for coming. Um, so I'm going to present uh, this uh, paper that we've been doing with my co-authors uh, that in a nutshell, it's an empirical paper that tries to uh, measure um, ecosystems, uh, the, the degree of ecosystems on the demand side and use uh, that measurement that we believe is uh, the first contribution that does such a measurement to try to uh, answer the question of whether the market definition, the way we know it uh, today, is still um, pertinent to um, analyze uh, competition uh, in ecosystems, as uh, many authors claim from, from the theory, or not. Um, so in terms of uh, the outline, it's a very classic one, except that um, maybe I'm going to begin by defining what I mean by ecosystems, because uh, this is a, a relatively new um, literature for economists in particular, even in the digital economics uh, subfield. Uh, and then I'll show you the, the motivation of uh, why this paper um, is important to us uh, and what is uh, the problem the problem we try to solve uh, that uh, the literature has been uh, showing from the theory uh, regarding how ecosystems uh, would be challenging the, the way we are used to do uh, competition analysis with a market definition. Then I'm going to uh, go to the research questions that we established to try to answer this. Um, the data we used, uh, the methodology, which is a, a big part of, uh, of the effort of the paper was uh, in, in the methodology part, uh, and finally the, the results, and uh, what conclusions uh, and clues for, for further research they, uh, they show. Um, if you have any, any questions of comprehension, please feel free to interrupt me because I might not see the, the chat or, or the hands raised with the presenter mode, but uh, so feel free to, to interrupt me. So first, um, what do I mean by ecosystems? So there, there's an extensive literature in ecosystems that comes from management, but it's been more and more um, in um, antitrust uh, law and economics discussions. Um, there are many, many definitions, but uh, they all agree on the, the basic uh, characterization of ecosystems. And I'm going to use um, Jakobitz uh, Chenam and Gower's definition with a Find is the most uh, comprehensive one to uh, understand what we want to measure afterwards. So the idea of ecosystems is that it's a form of uh, coordination between legally independent firms that is distinct from all other forms of coordination being a, uh, a supply chain, for example, uh, in two aspects. Um, the first one uh, to the idea is that these legally independent firms, they have to create non-generic complementarities because what, what, um, what, what do they mean by complementarities? Complementarities can be in production or in consumption. Uh, we're going to focus in this paper on consumption complementarities, meaning that the more you consume uh, of good A, the more useful good B becomes. But the difference with traditional complementarities is that these complementarities are non-generic in the sense that they require specific investment to be created. Um, so, for example, the if we contrast uh, let's say the smart TV ecosystem with uh, Another example, we're going to see this uh, more clearly. So a smart TV, uh, smart TVs have ecosystems around them in the sense that we have two um, different firms. Let's say the firm that produces the hardware, the, the smart TV hardware, the TV itself. And then lots of firms like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, that produce apps for these uh, smart TVs. Um, so 
here we do have a uh, complementary decent consumption. So the more apps and the better apps we have in the in the app store of, of this TV, the more useful, the more I enjoy my TV. Uh, if I have apps that have a high resolution and I have a high TV resolution, well, and then my consumption is going to be enhanced. Apologies. This Sorry, because we're not seeing any further slides. Have you started? Oh, oh I thought you were seeing a... Oh, okay. How about now? Yeah, well, yeah, now it's working. Sorry. Okay, it seems like the presenter mode is just not working. So I'm gonna, on my side, I was seeing the presenter mode. Sorry. Um, so this right. is this is the slide I, I was referring to. Thank you. Uh, um, so in a, in a smart TV, for example, we do have a non-generic complementarities in consumption. So I just explained that the complementarity side, but why is it non-generic? And this is important to distinguish ecosystems from other forms of uh, organization between firms. It's non-generic in the sense that uh, these firms have to make specific investments, meaning investments that uh, work better or only work uh, with certain specific firms that cannot be costlessly redeployed to other firms. So for example, uh, Netflix developed an app that works specifically with a, uh, the Google Store, or if you want in the, in the mobile uh, app ecosystem, uh, sometimes you see that the app is developed for iOS, but it's not developed for Android or vice versa. So they have to actually tailor the product for it to work specifically with this uh, other firm. And that's why uh, we're impressed with the ecosystem. These firms coordinate because working together, making their products more compatible, creates more final value added for the consumers. And therefore, they have an interest in cooperating. Uh, or another example is a classic, uh, and many of you may have, these smart TVs where you see a button for Netflix or for YouTube, well, that's, that's a specific investment. It, it, that button talks you to Netflix and not to other uh, possible apps because they understand that the TV will be more useful if you have a shortcut to Netflix. Uh, and that's opposed to generic complementarities, like the example of the teacup on the tea bag. The tea bag, yes, it works better with a teacup, certainly, because you can make your theater, but there's nothing that whoever produced a tea bag or whoever produced a teacup uh, invested in to make that compatibility happen. Uh, it, that uh, tea bag could be made in a traditional glass, for example, and it would work anyway. So that's for the definition part, but uh, as you will see, it's going to be very important to, to understand that and uh, what we're going to do empirically. So going now to the motivation of a paper, why, what where did this uh, paper come from? Well, from um, there's a growing uh, concern in the, by regulators, uh, in antitrust authorities, and in academia, uh, or common observation, let's say, that uh, it's more and more common than uh, digital platforms can exert economic power over firms that are in another relevant market uh, that is not even vertically related. Uh, so we have this idea of gatekeepers, and for example, in the Digital Markets Act, where a gatekeeper, like, uh, for example, it could be a Google Play Store, uh, might harm uh, or might exert power over firms that are in the app uh, market, which is distinct from, from the uh, app distribution market. Uh, and or we're seeing, for example, uh, that Greece uh, changed its competition law recently to account for this type of uh, exertion of uh, market power over firms that are in another market. So traditionally, we're always, uh, when we think of market power, we think of uh, firms have apply market power in the market uh, in which they compete with other uh, firms uh, or in vertically related markets. But in ecosystems, uh, it is more and more common to see that uh, this market power can be exerted over firms in another uh, market. Um, so this is a common observation and we see a lot also in the literature, uh, very different uh, antitrust oriented uh, contributions that are trying to show, well, look, competition in ecosystems happens across markets and we're seeing more and more of these uh, firms applying market power to other markets, to uh, uh, firms that in principle should not be competitors because they don't do the same thing. They're in another complementary market. Um, so the question that arises here uh, in the literature, as I'm going to show in the next slide, is, well, can we still define a relevant market uh, in the traditional way where there is a single relevant market and that market is made of substitute products and then that would be our unit of analysis to understand if there, there's a competition issue or whatever regulation we want to do or whatever competition analysis we want to do. Is this still valid in the face of ecosystems? 
And the literature here um, raises many questions regarding this. So maybe what would be the standard approach? Let's, say, let's, let's start from what would we do generally when we want to analyze competition? Uh, well, we define a relevant market. A relevant market is, is defined in terms of substitutes. So if you want to analyze competition in the in the running shoes market, well, you say, okay, who are the producers of running shoes? Adidas, Nike, et cetera. And you see, what, what are the products that actually are substitutes? You know, an Adidas shoe is different from a Nike shoe, but they do pretty much the same thing. High heel is a shoe, but it doesn't do the same thing. You cannot run with it. It actually deserves you running. So it's not in the, re the same relevant market. And then once you define what are the substitute products, then you have uh, uh, your market and whoever produces that is a competitor that would be the traditional way. And why is it important? Why do we care about defining a relevant market? Well, for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that uh, the market will delimit the arena of competition, meaning that Nike in this example and Adidas are competitors, but whoever produces a high heel shoe does not compete with Nike and Adidas because they do a different thing. So we're gonna take them out of the equation. Uh, also, there's implicit in this that these are pure rivals. I'll come back to that in a second, meaning that they're only competing with each other, they're not collaborating in any sort of way. And the second reason why we care about defining normally relevant market is that uh, it's also the scope of welfare effects, meaning that whatever happens with the competition in that market will affect only and only the producers and the consumers in that market. So if there was to be, for example, a merger between Nike and Adidas, well, that would affect uh, maybe the prices of, of uh, the running shoes market, but it would not affect other markets or only maybe vertically related markets like the, the letter that is used uh, for Nike, let's say, but not other markets that are not in the input-output relationship with them. And that would be the, the traditional approach, but uh, there's a lot of scholars saying, well, this actually shouldn't hold in the case of ecosystems because all these uh, premises are violated somehow. Uh, so for example, the first one is the, reason why is this idea of intra-ecosystem competition, meaning that in, in ecosystems, by definition, as I was telling before, there's a specific investment where firms invest to collaborate with firms in other markets uh, and they need to collaborate, but at the same time, they can compete, even if they don't do the same thing, even if they're completely unrelated markets. Uh, so, for example, the recent case between Apple and Epic Games illustrates this, where Apple, through its app store, uh, was forcing Epic Games, um, the main producer of, uh, of game apps, uh, to use its own payment system. So it was abusing in the terms of uh, the digital market tax, its gatekeeping power, to get a higher cut of the jointly created value. Apple Store makes Epic Game possible, Epic Game makes Apple Store more valuable, so we have an ecosystem there with specific investments. Uh, they do different things, you know, they, 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 don't, they don't produce the same service, so they're in different relevant markets, but they compete uh, in different ways to get a higher cut. So Apple uses its power to say, okay, well, I'm gonna get a higher share, you're gonna use my payment system and, and then you're gonna pay me a commission or I'm gonna set you a high fee. Um, and then, so that uh, shows that there's not only a collab pure collaboration or pure competition, there's a mix of the two, contrary to the traditional approach. Uh, well, the second reason is that uh, uh, why we could uh, question the, the importance or uh, the pertinence of the uh, of a relevant market uh, approach is that uh, uh, because of these uh, non generic complementarities, well, then firms have to consider what happens between their complementaries. So if uh, everybody was migrating to a competing uh, app store, well, maybe that probably would affect competition in the app games um, ecosystem. Uh, or if another platform replaces Netflix, and that would certainly affect what happens in the market um, for TVs that are based on Netflix. And, and it's, so here, it's a very similar thing to what we're used to do in the multi-sided markets approach, where we have one platform that hosts different uh, sites of the market, or so actually different markets, like uh, advertisers and news producers in, in a news uh, platform. These are two different markets. Uh, you know, one is about producing news, the other one is about uh, producing ads, but uh, the two are, are, are linked through complementarities. The difference here is that uh, we we don't have one platform linking them. Like if you enter theguardian.com, uh, the Guardian has its ads and it's hosting the two sides of the platform. Here, we might not even know uh, where these markets are because we cannot go to one platform and see them. These complementarities are created privately between independently uh, legally independent firms. 
And finally, the, the third reason why uh, the traditional market approach or the substitutability approach uh, is challenging ecosystems is that, uh, well, because whatever happens uh, in one market affects another one, then the relevant market of one firm is not necessarily the only scope of, um, of um, welfare effects. So if, there, uh, if uh, Netflix disappears, that is certainly going to you know, change other related market flow complementarities with Netflix. Uh, like I don't know, all these web pages you see that uh, are about uh, finding where to watch things. Um, so the good part of the uh, smart TV ecosystem. Uh, so here we see that uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of questioning going on recently in the literature uh, about whether we can still define a relevant market, a single relevant market, and use that uh, as our standard to analyze competition in the case of ecosystems. But uh, the problem is that this uh, is mostly a theoretical literature, uh, so it raises very interesting questions, but uh, actually, to this extent, no one has tested whether you know, this is the case, uh, because in Grump, in a, in a big share, this ecosystem of literature is uh, a theoretical literature, and although there are a lot of empirical contributions, they tend to focus on uh, supply-side complementarities, whereas our focus is on demand-side complementarities, meaning does consuming more or consuming this product make this other product more valuable? Um, and also, these contributions tend to be from literatures that are not so focusing uh, on the on the competition and regulatory analysis implications. So we have on the one side the pure theory of ecosystems, and on the other side, uh, these people in the in the competition law and economics are uh, saying, uh, well, you know, this ecosystems emergence. Uh, is questioning their um, regulatory analysis and the competition analysis we're used to do, but the two haven't merged and they haven't been tested empirically. So that's what we're going to try to do in this paper. We're going to try to see if we can measure these complementarities, these non-generic complementarities in demand to map out uh, ecosystems and then use uh, that measurement in different ways to see if uh, actually this, uh, this um, concerns about the weather uh, we can still use the standard or substitutability approach to defining a single relevant market, still halts or not in the case uh, of uh, ecosystems. And we're going to do that by focusing on platform ecosystems. You have digital and not digital ecosystems, but uh, our focus will be on platforms. And I'll detail that uh, next uh, when I talk about the data we use. What we're basically trying to do is answer four research questions that are uh, are going to allow us to, to assess whether these, uh, uh, these challenges posed in the theoretical literature to how ecosystems kind of can be or not fit for the traditional market definition are, are actually valid from an empirical point of view. So the first question is uh, maybe the, the simplest one, but perhaps the most important is how prevalent are these demand side linkages or non generic complementarities in conception? We use uh, the two terms interchangeably because, well, maybe. If, if this is a small phenomenon, then you know, it might be interesting from a theoretical point of view, but irrelevant from a practical point of view. Uh, so the first question uh, is the most basic one, saying, well, uh, how important is this in the platform economy? Uh, and the theory, as I was saying before, it's uh, only theoretical on this side regarding the demand. So we actually don't have any pre-established answer in, in the literature. Uh, we're going to find out. Um, so the second question is, okay, provided that this is a relevant uh, uh, empirical phenomenon, are these uh, demand side linkages cross-market? Because as I was showing before, all these issues with uh, how to uh, do a competition analysis stem from the fact that uh, these terms are located in different relevant markets. Uh, so you might compete with someone which is in a different market, or what you do in one market affects other markets in, the, in your ecosystem. Uh, so the whole, the whole problem is based on the fact that these, uh, the, some, these linkages are across market. So uh, the theory of ecosystems says, yes, this is, this is almost by definition what happens in ecosystems. Uh, it's firms in different complementary markets that try to create these complementarities. Um, like a, a price comparison tool, for example, and a retailer like Amazon. They're both in the retail ecosystem uh, and they do different things. One is about price comparison, the other one is about selling you the product, uh, but the two, you know, invest in working better with the other one because they both gain from that. So that's a traditional view of ecosystems. Um, the third question we're going to try to answer is, um, is this idea of competition uh, prevalent and competition in the sense that uh, these firms, uh, again, are, are in completely unrelated markets, complementary, but, uh, but unrelated. They don't, they don't 
do the same thing. They don't sell the same products to the same type of uh, clients, and yet they compete for a share of value. So, um, should we see that ecosystems are structured actually around uh, uh, different uh, non-overlapping markets or not? Uh, so the theory would say yes, they're in different non-overlapping markets. And finally, um, we want to see if these ecosystems are structured around industries, as the theory says, uh, because usually you would think of uh, the fintech ecosystems or the mobility ecosystem or the gaming ecosystem, ecosystem where you have different firms that do uh, very different uh, services, but around the same topic, around the same final consumer uh, experience or demand. Uh, and this is important because if, as in the theory shows in different case studies, uh, these ecosystem structures are about industries and we say, well, maybe we have to go outside of the single relevant market. Well, maybe the, the scope of uh, the welfare effects and the analysis of competition should be the industry uh, or and not simply the uh, uh, the relevant market. So. If, if ecosystems are indeed structured around an industry, well, maybe that should be our unit of analysis and that's a good first guess when we start doing competition analysis. So these are the four questions we're gonna try to answer. And the way we're gonna try to answer them is by exploiting data on traffic uh, between platforms. So what we have here uh, as a data set that we use is uh, desktop traffic um, from 20 EU countries for which we can download from similar web, which is one of uh, the main uh, providers of uh, web traffic in the world. And what we can observe here is for each domain, so a domain could be, for example, here, tripadvisor.com, that's a domain. Uh, and we can see how many people enter per month, per year, per country uh, to that domain. Uh, and also, where did that traffic come from? And I'll go back to that in detail in a second, um, meaning uh, where did people enter, for example, because they typed in tripadvisor.com or did they enter because they clicked on an email that had a link for TripAdvisor or did they enter because someone sent on Facebook to them that link? So we can actually distinguish how people entered this domain, how many times, uh, from which country, um, and the number of visits. So, Obviously, we took data for the whole 2020 year to avoid any seasonality problems. Uh, it was very similar in terms of results when we tried 2019, so, so we stuck to, to one year. Um, so, and then that was obviously our first very huge uh, data set because here we have all sorts of websites. Uh, it was around 4.25 million observations for the whole 2020, imagine for all the domains that are captured. And then comes the methodology part again. Once we have like this, this very raw data, how do we turn that into something that allows us to measure uh, these uh, demanded linkages that uh, show us uh, ecosystems in demand? So here, here's uh, kind of like the steps we took, and I'm, I'm gonna give you some details about them. Well, the first one is selecting the platforms. Okay, what are the main platforms we're gonna we're gonna analyze? Because there are many many platforms, so we have to come up with a with a list that is representative of the platform economy. Second, we needed to develop a proxy with this data of uh, these demands and linkages, these non-generic complementarities in consumption. Uh, and we developed one that I'm gonna explain in a second. Then once we had this proxy, um, we wanted to understand whether these um, platforms are uh, actually in the same relevant market in complementary markets and, or in completely unrelated markets or anything in between. So we had to come up with a way of classifying whether they are or not in the, in the same markets, in the same, uh, well, although in the same ecosystem. Um, finally, we had to clean all this, uh, all the noise in the data, because uh, as I will explain in a minute, uh, you can imagine that at least once uh, in a while, someone clicks from any random website to another or gets to a website. So we needed to, to eliminate all these cross linkages that are insignificant in terms of traffic. If someone click twice, let's say, uh, from Facebook Messenger to TripAdvisor, well, twice in a year is not strong enough to say, okay, this shows that uh, there's a big complementarity between the two. So we needed to come up with a way also of, of cleaning this, um, this occasional traffic to have a clearer picture of what actually constitutes uh, uh, demand set linkage. And finally, we use community detection algorithms to, to the limit to find, okay, what are the websites that are more related to each other that we can consider to be an ecosystem in terms of demand. 
So regarding the selection of platforms, it, uh, we follow here uh, to come up with a list of platforms, the observability of the platform economy uh, methodology, which using the same source, which is a, an advantage in terms of the consistent methodology, meaning similar web, the same provider, um, uh, they list uh, the most, uh, you, the, the um, platforms that have the most unique visitors um, in Europe, uh, and then both in mobile and desktop, although our, our analysis is only on desktop. And then we see uh, also uh, in each category, what are the most visited platforms? So a category being like a social network, a marketplace. So in order to have you know, the, the most popular platforms in Europe um, in different categories. And finally, what we did uh, differently, so more, more finely grained than, than this uh, methodology because of our, our needs, was to distinguish uh, which platforms are actually league independent. Because you have a lot of platforms uh, that, were, that are actually part of the same group. Uh, so if you have Gmail and Google search, well, they're both belong to Alphabet. So we needed to account for that because uh, coming back to the first definition of ecosystems, these are legally independent firms. They're not a conglomerate. It's a different distinct organizational form in which you have uh, legally independent firms collaborating. So we needed to distinguish who, well, from all these platforms, what are the parent platforms and divide it, divide, uh, not just put Google, but put like Gmail as one platform, Google search as another platform, Google Flights as another platform, but they all belong to Google Alphabet. So that gives us a total list of 246 main platforms in Europe that, uh, that uh, we're going to analyze in, in this paper. Then the second question is, okay, how do we, from all this traffic information, how do we come up with a measurement of, of these complementarities? And here we exploited the, the, uh, what I was showing you before in the data, which is the source of the data, meaning how did people arrive to that link? When you see someone in TripAdvisor.com, how did this person arrive to TripAdvisor.com? So there, there's many categories, and this comes from, from the provider, from similar web. It gives you the how. Uh, so the first one is direct. When someone actually types in the browser TripAdvisor.com, it could be mail. It could be that someone sends you an email with that link that would be classified as mail. It could be social, uh, meaning that um, through a social network, um, someone sent you. Uh, the link, and this is only special, uh, sorry, non-specialized generic uh, social networks. So it's forums, for instance, are not accounted here. Social would be using Facebook, using WhatsApp, using any sort of messaging or, or social network uh, um, standard um, generic one to send a, a link. Uh, then you have organic search, which is when you uh, find in a, in a browser, in a, sorry, in a, in a um, search engine like Google, for example, you type, uh, you know, trips, and then you find TripAdvisor's website, and you click on it. Well, that that's an organic search uh, origin. It means you got to TripAdvisor.com through Googling. Uh, paid search would be the same, but when you actually click on a paid uh, on an ad, uh, when you see, for example, a Google promoted, meaning or ad, uh, meaning that uh, yeah, it came up as a search result, but it was an ad. Uh, then you have display ad, which is the same idea when you see we are scrolling through any website and you see an ad and you click on it. And finally, referral, which is all, all the rest. Um, so for example, if uh, you're reading TripAdvisor and, and in TripAdvisor, they, sent a, they put a link to Google Maps for you to, to find the, uh, the place you're looking for, that would be referral because it's none of the above. And referral is where we're taking uh, we're only considering that in order to, to analyze the non generic complementarities in consumption. And why is that? Because um, basically all the other ones, well, direct, direct traffic means you enter directly websites, so there's actually no complementarity. No, no other website help you get there. Um, it, it's not, you didn't discover the website or visit it more because of another one. And all the other ones are generic uh, ways or multi-purpose technologies. Uh, so for example, if you use a mail to send an email with something, well, it doesn't mean that the, you know whoever created the, that mailing service actually is doing something for you to find it better. It's just that someone is using mail as a general purpose technology to communicate. Just like if you're calling up you know, before the apps, uh, you were calling uh, to get a pizza. Uh, well, the phone company certainly is creating complementarities with the pizza shop, but that's a generic complementarity uh, because there's nothing that a company, the phone company or the pizza shop invests in to work better with phones, to work better with... Uh, uh, the pizza place is just a general purpose technology. Whereas in referral, there's the idea that uh, someone put on purpose that ad, I'm sorry, that, uh, that um, link to take you on purpose to another website. Uh, and it's not because 
you're using a generic search or generic communication tool or because it's an ad, it's because they meant you to. So we're gonna take this referral and then we do a very simple metric, which is we take all the referral traffic that a platform received from another legally independent platform, um, sorry, no, from all, of, all the traffic that any platform received and from all the ones that are legally independent, we see what share comes from other platforms. So for example, we wanna see uh, the, the mindset leakages of uh, TripAdvisor, we're gonna check all the referral traffic that, uh, that uh, TripAdvisor received in 2020, and we're gonna see what percentage comes, for example, from, um, uh, let's say, uh, Airbnb. Uh, um, if we find that 5% comes from Airbnb, then Airbnb is gonna score 5%, meaning that there's a generic complementarity, non-generic complementarity in consumption of 5% going from Airbnb to, uh, the triple advisor in this example. So um, once we have that, we needed to uh, separate these uh, these uh, competitive relationships between firms. We needed to know uh, which which um, company actually does the same thing as another one in order to say are they in the same market, are they complementary, are they direct competitors. Uh, so what we did here is that we took for every of the 246 platforms in, in the sample, we analyze how they self-describe in their websites and app description, and we classify them in terms of the topic, subtopic, the service they provide, and the subservice. So if we take Airbnb as an example, the topic is tourism, more generally. The subtopic is lodging, because they, specify, they specialize on lodging in terms of tourism. And then what is their service? Well, they help you find first a, a, a lodging, in this case, and the subservice, they also help you booking. So we did that for every platform. And then by combining these two, we can find, uh, we can see if you're in the same related and related markets or not. So unrelated would be the simplest one. They do completely different things, it's different subtopic, different service. Uh, so for example, Amazon and Airbnb. One is in retail, the other one is in uh, tourism lodging. Uh, one is about uh, shopping, the other one is about finding. Completely different. So we can say those two are unrelated markets. Then you would have complementers, the, the classic ecosystems of story where uh, they're in the same subtopic, uh, but they provide different services. Uh, so the, uh, the price comparison tool, Trova Prezzi, and they're very popular in Italy, um, and Amazon, both are uh, on the subtopic retail in this case, uh, but one does price comparison and the other one does uh, the shopping. So they're actually complementary to each other. And finally, we would have the case of direct competitors like Booking and Airbnb. They're both in the lodging subtopic and they both help you find and book uh, lodging. So they're actually competing for the same thing here when the traditional framework of competition where competitors are in the same relevant market, they do the same thing and they compete with each other for the same buck. Um, finally, once we classify all these platforms, uh, the final step was, okay, how do we uh, clean the noise? Uh, what do you see here? Uh, so one, once we uh, calculate this metric of the share of uh, total referral traffic going from one platform to the other, what I'm going to show you in the next slide is the results. It looks it's a, it's a network, so it's a network like you can see here below. Uh, this uh, example platform A has a 20% uh, complementarity with platform B in the sense that uh, from all the referral traffic that platform B receives, 20% comes from platform A. Uh, but then platform B might have a 5% uh, complementarity with uh, platform C. Uh, the question is, okay, where do we do the cut? You know, uh, because if there's at least one click from platform B to platform C in 2020, there will be an arrow there. And then you can imagine that this network would be completely irreadable and actually not showing anything interesting. And that's actually what you see in the, the statistics of this network uh, once without the cleaning, the, the, the um, mean value in of complementarities is 0 0.06. Uh, so it's very low, meaning that uh, most of the cases just like occasional traffic sometimes, just like a couple of clicks per year. Uh, and the median is close to zero, meaning like most of, uh, of uh, the clicks that we're gonna see in terms of referral traffic are just a couple of clicks per, per year. But we needed to find a cut. So what did, what did we do to, to find the cut? Of, okay, this is actually translating an actual specific investment by this firm to, for you to go to this other uh, firm. So there's actually a complementarity that is wanted and it's not just the pure randomness. Um, so what we did is that we, we look at um, different um, uh, measures that we plotted against the threshold. We said, okay, what would happen if we had a threshold of zero, zero, one, zero, two, yeah, until 100? So meaning that we make the cut at a, 
at a, a percentage of complementarity is between zero and 100. So that's what you see in this little plot here on the x-axis. And then we plot it against different uh, metrics that allow us to see how it's distributed. So for example, the average degree of the network, meaning the, the average uh, amount of connections each platform has with another one. In average, a platform has, if we took, a, let's say, a threshold of 5%, in average, every platform will have, a, I don't know, three connections. If we raise the threshold to 10%, well, then it's only, in average, two platforms, a uh, connection per platform that actually passed that threshold. We did that also with a Cartouche's coefficient of, of this variable, um, and also with the skewness coefficient. And the, the point was to see here, where do we find a break? Meaning that most are going to be clustered around very little traffic. Uh, and what we saw with the three measurements is that in this sample, um, but it might be different with our samples, obviously, uh, around when you put the threshold at 10% complementarity level, then uh, that there's a change in the tendency, meaning that then you see that all these mm, platforms with very low complementarities are, are clustered around the, the first part. And then at some point, when you put a 10% uh, cut, there's a change in the tendency. So we consider that everything that is below that is uh, just a noise, just a couple of uh, random clicks per year, and they don't actually cons consider it uh, um, complementarity. Um, also, intuitively, it seems like a reasonable figure, you know, meaning that if at least 10% of your referral traffic comes from another platform, well, it means there is an actual uh, wanted investment uh, from that platform to create complementarities with yours, if that happens. And finally, well, when we did all that, we can get to the results. We can actually plot this uh, this network of of platforms that uh, that show uh, show um, complementarities with each other, and then find these ecosystems and use that to answer our questions. So what you see here uh, uh, is a is a network that comes out. Uh, so each node in this case is is a platform where we have uh, simply the name, and the arrows you see is the complementarities. Uh, meaning uh, with the direction, because the complementarities can go one way, both ways. So, for example, uh, here it means TripAdvisor sending uh, traffic to Google Maps means that at least 10% of the total referral traffic that Google Maps re received in 2020 came from TripAdvisor. So, and the thicker the arrow, the bigger the uh, level of complementarity according to our proxy. And finally, the colors or, or the relationship in terms of uh, the markets uh, in which these uh, firms are. So uh, that was uh, the classification I explained before. So if it's in red, means they're direct competitors. They are doing the same thing, the same service, and the same topic. So TripAdvisor and Hotels at Company, and they both help you find a lodging and book it. So they're actually competing for the same thing. Uh, Google Maps and TripAdvisor, well, they're completely unrelated uh, um, because they're in different subtopics and in different um, functions and so on. And then, well, we have like also intermediate uh, levels. So what's important here, and finally, yeah, the, the, the clustering. So when, when you see, okay, which nodes are very related to each other, that, that's a pain in areas. So you see the little ecosystem. So in the middle, you can see, for example, a tourism uh, lodging ecosystem. Um, then uh, you can see also a flying ecosystem in green below, and so on. So the first question that, that we wanted to answer, remember, was, OK, how, how important is this, this ecosystem? You know, how, how, how big is this phenomenon? Is, is it worth caring from an empirical point of view? Or is it just uh, some interesting um, theoretical feature with no, not many um, uh, relevance? Well, actually, we found that it's, it's, uh, it's uh, important. We found uh, that there are linkages between 18% of, uh, of the 246 platforms uh, that are the main ones in Europe in terms of traffic. Um, but you should bear in mind that the theoretical maximum is not 100 in this, uh, in this uh, measurement because, uh, by definition, ecosystems are between legally independent firms. So, for example, if we have Google Maps and Gmail, they're both from the same uh, company. So we cannot uh, actually account that, the, uh, that as, a, as a possible uh, um, uh, link that, that we can count as uh, demand side linkages. So if we did that with the parent platforms, let's say Alphabet uh, group uh, and other, other groups of platforms, because many of these are owned by the same group, for example, in the, in the, in the um, lodging platforms, um, well, then we would find in 31% of these groups are related through um, demand side linkages. So it's actually a, a relevant phenomenon. And in average, they have a 29% score. And in this case, yes, the score goes from zero to 100%. 
um, and a median score of 22%. So we can say that, uh, yeah, it's, it's relevant. Like roughly one out of five platforms of the main ones in Europe are concerned by this. And in average, they have a uh, kind of, well, they have, they have a non-negligent uh, average and median amount of complementarity. So it is relevant. Now the question is, okay, but uh, is, if it's relevant, do we see this, uh, these problems in terms of market definition that we're seeing before? Uh, and remember I was saying, well, most of his issues come from the fact that uh, these demand-side linkages are between firms located in different relevant markets. So we cannot just define a single relevant market anymore. Uh, what, what we find surprisingly is that in half of the cases, uh, they are in the exact same relevant market or at least in a, a very overlapping market. So this is, for example, if we go back to, to the previous slide, um, the case where you see um, Skyscanner and Ryanair, you know, one is a flight comparison tool, but uh, they get uh, a commission uh, for every every flight the, they take you to. And obviously Ryanair would like to sell you the same flight without the commission. So they're actually you know, competing for the same thing. They're in the same direct uh, competitors around the market, and yet they collaborate with each other uh, because they need each other somehow. Um, then um, you can have also indirect competitors, meaning that they compete for the same thing, but one at least one of the platforms also has an important activity in other things. So, for example, Booking.com. Uh, yes, you can book flights, but it's mostly about booking uh, accommodation. So, um, in that case, it competes partially with uh, Wizard in this case, and yet they collaborate. So, if you take all the the red and orange and arrows here, um, what you find is direct competitors or indirect competitors. With the degrees, you know, medium, high, we, we fine tune this. And the big picture is half of the cases are actually direct or indirect competitors that nonetheless collaborate on purpose. Um, so that's a kind of a striking result. Um, and well, in terms of competition, do we actually see this competition between firms that are supposed to be in the in the classic example, uh, like the price comparison uh, uh, ret and retailer and the retailer where you know, they just help each other, but uh, they don't compete for a commission or anything. Well, actually, only in 25% of the cases we find this this uh, this uh, standard ecosystem approach. So actually, competition doesn't seem to happen that much in the platform economy in Europe, at least, uh, in, in that way where firms are actually pure complementers and they only compete for the total value created. And finally, uh, do we see these uh, complementarities happening in, within industries. So here what we do is, is we redo the graph, but instead of plotting each firm as a, as a node, we plot every market as a node, meaning all the firms that do the same thing, the same service, and about the same subtopic, for example, looking for lodging. Uh, so you have Airbnb and all its competitors, we consider them as one node, and then we see which markets are related to each other uh, to see if these ecosystems are also have some sort of a, a coherence in terms of uh, markets that, that we could Kind of guess by knowing the platforms and looking at the uh, at the at the first graph. Um, what we see is that in most cases, yes. So here you can you can see the blue one, for example, is a clear uh, marketplace ecosystem where you have a more or less specialized uh, uh, marketplaces that send traffic to each other. It makes, makes a lot of sense. You know, you have a general retail marketplace that receives traffic from a specialized uh, real estate uh, platform. Um, but in turn, um, the real estate also sends to other specialized platforms because, you know, they might get clients that want a, uh, a car and they, then they send you to a specialized car platform, even though the, probably maybe the real estate also sells cars or maybe not. But, uh, you know, this, uh, there's a clear coherence here, or you can see on the right upper side, uh, a very tourism ecosystem. So you look for lodging, you look for what to do uh, in a house, in a, in a city, like in TripAdvisor, you look for a flight, you look for how to get to there. And you have like very clear industry defined ecosystems and data sometimes you know, uh, linkages between ecosystems. But it's, what it's more striking is that in some particular cases, um, we, did, we did find these industry agnostics ecosystems. Uh, so one here is a web portal general. This is kind of like the, the traditional web portal uh, from the first internet era that is still very valid in many countries where you go to a portal and they, they show you sports, they show you, uh, they send you to a platform that uh, sells uh, news about cars or fashion because they identify a cluster of uh, different sim similar um, things that people like in that portal. But the most striking one for us, and I'll come back to that in the conclusion in a second, is this other one, this industry agnostic ecosystem, which corresponds to the French uh, uh, gaming forum platform, Jeux Video, 
which has uh, big uh, complementarities with uh, Vinted, which is a main uh, fashion, uh, secondhand fashion uh, platform, uh, with uh, the main uh, secondhand retailer uh, in France, Le Bon Coin, where you can, like the eBay of uh, France, let's say. Uh, and with a new uh, health platform. So these are completely unrelated markets. There's no way you can you can make a, a narrative about input output or anything. These are very different markets and yet they create complementarities. So what can we, can we if we go back to our original theoretical questions about market definition, what, what does all these uh, empirical analysis tell us? Well, the first one, the main conclusion is uh, susceptibility approach is still useful. Uh, we're not in the extreme case, uh, the, uh, the theory of ecosystems uh, uh, would indicate, but it doesn't mean that it's completely usable just like that in uh, ecosystems. We do require some adaptations. Uh, we do see that these uh, linkages between markets are still important in half of the cases. Uh, so maybe what we need to do is not to define a single relevant market, uh, but to define relevant markets in plural, because what happens in the competition in one market through this complementarity should affect another one and because there might be competition across markets. Um, and then what we, another lesson is that there are very complex uh, competitive relationships that, that don't fit the pure rivals, you know, Nike versus Adidas. They just compete with each other. They want to get the best uh, shoe, cheaper, better. Uh, here we do see a lot of collaboration in half of the cases with direct competitors. So even in the same relevant market, they still create complementarities. But also they could be potential competitors in an, uh, in an unrelated market. So you, you might have, like in the example of your video, a complementary uh, market, uh, and then could uh, cause a threat of potential competitor. You know, if there's a lot of cross traffic, maybe they're gonna try to envelop you, in the, as in the platform theory, uh, enter your market. So that could be a potential competitor, which is actually a figure that uh, competition authorities, especially in the US, but also in Europe, uh, are using to, to talk a, a about competitors are not in your market, but could be in the future. So. All this data shows that in the platform economy ecosystem, there, there is a reason to, to think that a competition is not as simple. So maybe we should define relevant markets and think of these more complex, non-pure rival uh, relationships. And finally, the, the, the last uh, message is, uh, that we got from this, a kind of unintended uh, interesting questions was this idea of uh, industry agnostic ecosystems. You know, uh, we saw before that uh, these ecosystems that don't make any sense industry-wise and yet they exist. Uh, and in the particular case of the uh, Jeux Vidéo one, where uh, it's a gaming forum uh, in France uh, that is linking to any sort of uh, a couple of uh, platforms that are completely unrelated, it poses the question of, well, uh, can this ecosystem be user orchestrated? Because traditionally in the ecosystem literature, it's the firms who decide to create complementarities with one, one another, but it's not uh, the users. The users can only choose. So I can give you a remote uh, going to Netflix. You can choose to use or not, but you cannot actually pick what's in the remote if you put Netflix or something else. It comes like that. The firm decided. But here, since it's a, we're talking about a specialized forum, the firm makes the specific investment in nurturing this community, posting a lot of news, interviews, and tasks about games to create this community and keep it going. But then the users create complementarities with other platforms that maybe the firm did not intend that at all to have like a second-hand fashion platform or a resale platform. Uh, so maybe that's, uh, we can uh, question this from a, like a different type of organizational form where orchestration happens through the users, the consumers. Um, could be a different organizational form, maybe that's maybe an interesting avenue for the ecosystem theory. And, and also it's in, from a competition perspective, it would be interesting to see, you know, what would happen? What would be the response of the firm? Would they make a partnership? Would it try to envelop and enter the earth market? And meaning, oh, I'm getting a lot of traffic from this platform, I'm gonna buy it, or I'm gonna outcompete it, or I'm gonna make a joint venture, et cetera. So there might be different answers, and that's a, this is an interesting avenue for research. And finally, uh, well, obviously this is uh, the first attempt to our knowledge to measure demand side linkages in, in ecosystems. Uh, so I think that there's much more uh, research to do on how to fine grain these measurements or try to measure in other uh, type of ecosystems where you cannot use this uh, cross traffic data to measure it. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Thank you very much. I'm happy to discuss with you in the next minutes. Thanks. Thank you very much. This was very insightful. Uh, perhaps I'll start by asking if there are any questions uh, in the group, participants. Please feel free to just unmute and go ahead. 
and it's not about being happy to start. Uh, there's a lot of information. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> I'm going to have to probably take a slower look at the, at the paper version. I see there's a technical uh, working te technical report available. Is this... Yeah, it's online for free. So, yeah. Oh, great. I, I'll, I'll definitely have to read some parts carefully. Uh, so sorry if my current questions uh, will miss some points. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, at the very beginning, you basically focused on the referrals uh, as indication of some direct uh, cooperation and uh, between uh, different ecosystems, platforms. So I've been wondering, this basically gets rid of some very large platforms, right? Like probably Facebook or something like that, that were, I guess, uh, in the social group. And this, I guess, also fits in with what you said about the user orchestrated complementarities, right? Uh, where the users actually create these linkages. Uh, what I'm wondering is because it reminds me of of the case, for example, of Facebook at Instagram at one point, where I guess this was sort of the situation where Facebook became somewhat complementary to Instagram, where lots of traffic got probably redirected from Facebook to Instagram, which kind of was also a competition because Facebook had its own gallery of photos that was used before. And so this, they decided to purchase Instagram in the end. So I was wondering how this fits in with this picture. Uh, one question here is perhaps is, uh, what is the size of the linkages from the social uh, in comparison to the referrals, maybe? I don't know. And if, oh, sorry for that, <laughs> for the noise. And I don't know if you, if you have any ideas how to extend this to to, to include this, or perhaps it shouldn't include this, I don't know. So we'd love to hear what your thoughts on this. Um, yeah, thank you, Thunder. That, that's a that's a good question. Actually, we, we did try, and just uh, for the sake of uh, the illustration, what would happen if we accounted for all sorts of traffic, so not only referral, but all the sources. Uh, and basically, if you do that, what you see is mainly Google sending traffic to websites, a little bit of Facebook to a lesser extent, and and nothing else. Pretty much, it's all. Uh, I mean, the internet is highly concentrated on Google. When, when you see that, it's a. Uh, you have a graph with basically two big nodes sending to other websites, and that's it. Um, but besides the, um, I mean, the, the the readability or the result. Um, I think, I mean, the, the phenomenon of uh, complementarities uh, be between firms and how that might affect uh, the competitive re response, I think it's wider, uh, it's wider than ecosystems. So, for example, the, the case of Facebook sending traffic to Instagram or complementarities between a social network service by Facebook, uh, I think it, it, it is also relevant, you know, but it's, uh, it would fall out of the definition of ecosystem. So there, there's a fine line in the sense that these are generic complementarities, meaning that Facebook did not invest to create that. It's just like, you know, it's, an, it's a shopping window, let's say, where, where you display a lot of ads, or, uh, or it's a communication service too, through Messenger, uh, and just people use it to send whatever they want. But Facebook itself did not intend you to go to one platform or the other. Uh, it just happened because it's a vehicle, just like uh, Google. Uh, and there's a lot of writing in Antichrist about that. Uh, that would be generic complementarities. It's interesting in itself. Uh, we just wanted to narrow it down to, to ecosystems uh, because we have like more of this, um, say, tricky relationship in terms of competition where you actually intend to collaborate with someone that is getting, uh, getting your part of, of the value you're jointly creating. So this competition dynamic that, that is very interesting and uh, it's perhaps more puzzling in terms of competition analysis or this challenges more the, the standard of the definition of one relevant market in terms of substitutes than the generic one, uh, which is also interesting. And uh, you see a lot of writing uh, about that too in the literature. Um, so in the case of Facebook, Instagram, I think it, it's a classic example saying, well, if we cannot beat it, we buy them, right? And so, uh, 
maybe the, maybe there were uh, I didn't check that uh, a lot of uh, generic complementarities. Uh, maybe a lot of people were sending Instagram links for Facebook while they migrating in the process of migrating to Instagram, and Facebook was noticing that and said, okay, well, uh, plus other metrics and say, okay, let's let's uh, buy them because we're, there's a lot of complementarities with a pure rival in this case. They they do the same thing. So uh, one option is again, let's buy them out. Uh, so so that that could be an example of uh, this type of competitive dynamics, but with generic complementarities. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have other questions? Well, I have two more, if I may. Uh, so, um, so this is a, a bit slightly because uh, we recently started a project on attention economics, and I kind of see some no relevance in the sense that what we've been considering now is called competition between uh, different markets or unrelated firms that actually do different stuff but what they're all about is also attention uh, and i wondered if you have any thoughts uh, on this uh, or how could this factor in in the sense that some of these uh, services uh, it seems to me they also compete for the attention. They have their all own ads and stuff like that. And um, I imagine if you have something that aggregates prices from Amazon or other stuff, the service will want you to scroll and see different offers because it displays ads at the same time. And Amazon benefits from the traffic from there, but it would also probably prefer to retain people on its own website scrolling through its own catalog, right? Um, so I don't know, do, do you think the, the attention as a resource is something that would also fit in here? Uh, yeah, actually, we're giving it some thought with one of my co-authors uh, about this, saying, well, maybe that could be something we could also exploit in a different paper with the same data set. Um, because yeah, and it, well, I think there's, what's interesting in the attention economy is that um, again you, you find the same say um, puzzling phenomenon of uh, um, that triggered this paper, saying well firms are in completely unrelated markets in terms of what they they do, what they sell, uh, are competitors. Um, listen, um, so here we, we clearly have that. Um, the the empirical question to me would be. Okay, but wh where do you, where do you and uh, some people say in this literature as so well, you know, then that's a reason to you know, completely forget about market definition because the market is your uh, you're competing for hours, you know. Uh, so, you know, what what's the point of defining a market? Kind of in the if uh, you know the, the competition arena, let's say in the the terms of paper is not the ecosystem, you know, like in my paper, but uh, but uh, the competition arena uh, is you know the time of any, any person. Uh, but to me, the empirical question is, well, can we, I don't think we can have a, a representative consumer the, for which, uh, you know, Facebook or any website or a use uh, car sales uh, platform are competing. Maybe for some users, they're only interested, let's say, in social networks and uh, retailers or new and sports news, and they don't care at all about uh, other types of services. Uh, so they're actually not competing for that consumer. So for me, the, the critical question would be if we could identify, which we could not with this data, uh, individual consumers is are actually, do we see clusters of types of consumers uh, that actually always visit the same types of websites? Uh, so, you know, certain websites might be competing for certain consumers and certain other groups of websites competing for others, but maybe the overlap is not 100%. Uh, like uh, my attention is uh, is being in competition with uh, maybe five, six different types of platforms, but others I don't care about because I don't consume that, given my age, given my interest, given my etc. Um, so so that that would be for me what maybe the, the first interesting um, let's say empirical question that I would like to answer to 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 think of of this uh, competition across markets in terms of attention, and the other one is also about um, monetization. Um, because we, in the attention economy, the I mean, even if uh, the firms do different things on one side of the market, let's say uh, 
uh, uh, news uh, portal or a retail portal, uh, they're actually doing the same thing in terms of selling ads. Uh, but uh, I think it's more relevant for platforms that are monetizing mostly through advertisement or target advertisement or some sort of uh, data collection about users, uh, like Google, you know, free service, uh, their, their monetization is basically selling ads, and that's like 90% of the Alphabet's uh, um, revenues. But it's less important for Amazon, for, for example, also does ads, uh, display ads, but most of her revenues don't come from ads. Uh, they actually come Even if you take the conglomerate and Amazon Web Services, if you take it just Amazon Retail, it doesn't even come mostly from ads. So maybe this attention competition is less important for Amazon than it is for Google. So um, I don't have a clear idea of how to treat that, but, uh, but I think that's the, the second let's say, uh, dimension in which I, I would try to frame this more empirically, saying uh, uh, who competes with whom for, for whose attention, and then uh, to which extent is actually competition if, if a firm doesn't actually monetize much attention or to or the contrary, is it a lot of competition when the firm monetizes a lot of attention? Uh, I, I saw similar concerns, for example, in terms of uh, Google and Amazon. Um, I mean, uh, Google search and Amazon retail, let's say, where Amazon retail, uh, uh, sorry, what Google was getting uh, less and less, according to some reports in the US, less and less uh, money from people Googling um, retail products because people sometimes start their journey in Amazon. So if you want to buy um, uh, a used computer, uh, maybe you won't Google it, you go straight to Amazon. So now that's an ad placement that Google is losing. Uh, so what's interesting here is that this is a case of asymmetry. So for Google, it's very important because Google makes a lot of, all, almost all of its money from, from attention. Whereas Amazon, well, it's always good that you go to Amazon, but, uh, but uh, if it was the other way around, probably you would have clicked and ended up in Amazon. Uh, so for Amazon, it's not such a big deal if people go for Google. So I think that's also interesting in the attention economy in terms of uh, thinking of this competition across markets, that it can be asymmetrical, depending on how important uh, attention is to your monetization strategy. Those are very interesting points. Thank you for that. So, and about the consumers, so they understand what you mean is that the perspective would have to be from the consumer's needs and what competes for the specific needs, right? Yeah, or yeah, or maybe they don't compete for the same need in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, and that, that's the interesting point about this. And uh, even maybe, I don't know, TikTok is getting uh, attention that people were getting uh, from uh, doing a course online. You know, maybe you do less course online because you spend more time on TikTok. Uh, obviously, they don't do the same thing, but they compete for the same attention. So maybe the, the focus should be maybe more empirical, um, saying, okay, well, what kind of platforms, even if they do very different things, gather the attention from the same type of uh, consumers? So my, that, that would be, I mean, if I had a, an ideal data set where you could see each consumer, that would be doable um, to see, you know, maybe the, the clusters of consumers. We can do clustering similar methodologies to the one in this paper and, and see what are the, the markets that uh, appear, let's say, the attention markets. Thanks. And one last question from me is uh, maybe i didn't understand correctly or it's more of a technical about how you define things so as i understood um you basically don't if the, there was a person who only went from firm uh, from platform a to b only a few times within a year you don't consider that actually right is that um, yeah, I'd, I'd only consider in this case if um, Platform B received at least 10% of all, all its referral traffic from Platform A. If it, reserve, if it received less than 10%, then I wouldn't map uh, that traffic because it would be considered that it's too little uh, cross traffic to actually show a specific investment that the platform, that it just didn't happen by chance, but it's something consistent and wanted. And this includes... Uh, yeah. the, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and this includes both people who often travel from portal A to portal B and those who only do so rarely, right? Mm. Like yeah, exactly. Okay. We, we don't see individual users, so it could be, okay. you know, yeah. one million visits uh, each from one individual user that did it once in a year. It could be a person that visited the, the website 
a million times. Yeah. So we're going to distinguish whether it's the same user or not. Okay, I see, I see. Well, thank you. That, 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 that's all questions for me. Uh, do you have any other questions? Well, if not, then well, thank you very much. This has been really, this was really interesting. Uh, hopefully, we'll see each other at further seminars. And thank you again for. Yeah, being thank here. you very much for the invitation. And um, thank you all for for coming. And I hope uh, to meet you soon, virtually or physically, next seminars.